Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1995 Subaru Sambar. Behind me is a 660cc four-cylinder engine and down below is a five-speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Subaru Sambar for a couple of reasons, but mainly the fact that I love these little K trucks. K spelled K-E-I is a classification of vehicle in Japan that gives you tax benefits for driving a small vehicle. One of the requirements is a 660cc engine, but the other requirement is length, width, and height has to be within a certain range in order for you to get that tax break. So this fits those requirements, 660cc, and it's tiny. So this is a K truck. Before we get on with anything else, if you guys would like to check out my website, ZachPradle.com, I have a blog where I write behind the scenes posts. I'm gonna be writing a whole post about my trip down here to Jacksonville. You could also buy merch and submit your own vehicle to be reviewed there on the website. So please go check that out. But let's get back to that 660cc four cylinder engine is completely rear mounted. So there is a hatch up at the top in order to do maintenance on the engine, but with the key, you can actually open up the back end of the sandbar, that's what you're seeing now, in order to access the engine, which is really, really cool and very, very unique. Something else interesting is that a lot of K vehicles still stick with that 660cc, but they use three cylinders. So this one has an added cylinder at four cylinders, which makes it a little bit torquier, a little bit more pleasant to drive than a three-cylinder. Like the Honda Acti I reviewed a couple years ago. That was a three-cylinder where this is a four. You could also find Subaru sandbars that were supercharged and you could also find them with CVT automatic transmissions. However, they failed pretty miserably and no one bought those. Like I said, paired to a five-speed manual transmission, nothing really too crazy to note here. It's fine, it has nice shifter feel, and the pedals are so little and dainty. They weren't quite made for us Bigfoot Americans. Last but not least, this here sandbar is four-wheel drive. We'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have my gauge cluster. On the left, I have my fuel and coolant temperature. In the center, I have my speedometer, of course, in kilometers an hour, as well as it does have the suggested gear I should be in. Kind of interesting. And then to the far right, I have a diagram of what I assume is a car and this will show you what doors are open and things like that. Kind of interesting, not very exact, but that's okay. On the steering wheel, I only have the Subaru logo and the horn, that is it. And off to the right, I have a bunch of dead switches, an added cup holder up top, and then on the door, I have my crank for the window, and of course, my handle to get in and out of the vehicle. Moving into the center, I do have added cup holders. These are actually from a different Japanese Subaru product. And so we'll do a big friggin' bottle test, but there's just, there's no hope, guys. The sandbar is not fitting the big friggin' bottle. Moving down below that, we have climate control vents, the climate controls themselves, which I am so happy to be down here in Florida for February. I might have to turn on the AC. Then I do have an aftermarket radio, and I have this little device. This is a Japanese tolling device, basically like an iPass or SunPass here in, in Florida. Then I do have an ashtray, which says no smoking, but it's an ashtray and cigarette lighter that also says no smoking. Kind of weird. Then moving on to the shifter, the shifter is kind of interesting because it has the four wheel drive settings on top. It's actually a button on top of the shifter. Very, very odd placement there, but that's actually pretty standard for older Subarus. They had this sort of fighter jet missile style four wheel drive buttons, pretty odd. Then I do have my handbrake and that's pretty much it for the center console. The seats are not that comfortable. Mainly it's the driving position that's really bothering me. And I had the same complaint in the Honda Acti. The pedals are in a weird spot where it actually sort of crooks my ankle and it's not very fun. The seat itself is bolted to the back of the car, which is kind of funny in all honesty. And since we don't have back seats, let's hop around back and talk about the bed because there's some interesting truck things back there. So around the back of the Subaru Sandbar, this is what I was talking about. This, you have four bolts and you could take it off to maintenance the engine, but you can also open up this compartment, which is what I was showing earlier. Now, the cool thing is that you can actually undo this 
and your little tailgate comes down. And the tailgate comes all the way down, which is kind of nice. But you can also undo these. Follow me here, follow me here. And now you have a complete flat bed on your Subaru. Now the Honda Acti does this as well. This isn't particular just to Subaru, but I think that this is a really, really cool and unique feature of the sandbar and of K trucks in general. If you need a flat bed, voila, here you are. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I love the look of the sandbar. It looks the same as pretty much every other K truck from the 90s, which is fine, but I just, I like it. I like this sort of cab forward, cab over look. You have to remember the front wheels are kind of at your butt, which is very, very interesting. Makes it easy to get in and out of but just an interesting driving experience to say the least. And I have to say, this is very, very comparable to the Honda Acti and the Daihatsu Hijet that I drove last year. I'll be honest, the actual driving experience is not that pleasurable. This truck will do 60 miles an hour, but it's not terribly happy about it. If you don't mind it shouting at you and the rattles I'm sure you've been hearing throughout this whole video, then yeah, you'll be fine. But it's not very happy to go very fast. And it's very basic. These are utility vehicles. These are meant to be used on farms, to be used in cities, especially like for bar owners in Tokyo, moving kegs around from place to place. That's what these were originally meant to do. And so, yes, this is a very cool and unique driving experience. And I love these little K trucks. Anytime I get an opportunity to drive one of these, I hop on immediately. I just love them so much. But would I want to daily drive one of these? Not really, especially here on American roads. But boy, are they fun in the meantime. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Matt for letting me take out his Subaru Sandbar. All of his information can be found in the description below. He has an Instagram account. He's absolutely awesome. I'm filming a bunch of cars from him today and I can't wait to drive the others along with this. So please go check out his Instagram. Send him a message, say you saw the video and I appreciate that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care guys.